guys, this is Magena Fitness anytime and anywhere by Magena with my best and favorite water exercise of 2020. Yes, all of those without equipment. I got 30 of those and I cannot wait to tell you all about it. If you are new on my channel, make sure you subscribe and check my playlist. You're gonna find over hundreds of different workouts, Pilates, fusion of yoga and Pilates, interval training, weight training, and yes, aqua. Some of those workouts are easy, some are extremely challenging. You pick what you need and do it. Don't forget to share those videos with your friends. I'm adding a new workout every Saturday. So check my Facebook and see what's coming next week. Also, if you're curious about those places where I make those videos, check my travel vlogs. Those are gorgeous places and I know I'll convince you to visit those one day. Are you ready? Let's get going. All right, number one, crisscross. This is a fun one. And we're gonna jump in and out, crossing feet ahead of us. First, the right hand and right leg, like so. And then you're gonna switch left forward and right forward. Uh-huh. With this exercise, your hands will pretty much copy your legs. You wanna keep track on which leg you cross ahead of you because you may choose to do right leg being crossed over ahead of you eight times and then switch or you can alternate pretty much what I'm showing you now palms are away from you facing each other with fingertips linked yes there will be a little bit of the bounce up and down but not too much Make sure you are absorbing that impact by bringing your heels down to the bottom of the pool. Keep your core engaged and remember, you want your shoulders to stay square with your hips. That means you are not leaning forward, backwards or sideways. Control your breath, inhale into the nose and exhale out through your mouth. Today I will be showing you each exercise for a little over a minute, but you can make your notes, pick your favorites, and do them way longer than only one minute each. Create your own workout. Also, at the end of the video, I wanna hear from you. Which one was your favorite from all those 30 moves? Number two, we're gonna do knee curl and we're gonna tuck knee after each kick. There you go, so you kick to the side and then you curl this knee in towards yourself. We're gonna do repeaters. So I want you to try do anywhere from eight to 12 per leg and only after that you're gonna switch side. You'll be pushing your palms away from yourself. But notice, there's no water being splashed. Go ahead, switch side and repeat the same right here. Now you want your first kick and your last kick to look exactly the same. So possibly try keep that knee as close to the surface as you possibly can. Control your breath. Maintain good tempo. You want to feel you are really using water resistance with this one. Don't end it up just shaking your leg. Imagine there is something on your side and you want to give it a good kick. Notice that with this kick, you are pushing your palms as far away from your foot as you can. Yeah, feel that stretch. Keep your core extremely engaged here. Avoid leaning forward. You will be moving your shoulders slightly off to the side, but don't bend forward. Leg you are standing on is grounded on the bottom of the pool. Every now and then, if you feel your foot moves up and down just a tiny bit, that's fine. 
but I don't want to end it up bouncing up down too much. Those are repeaters, they all identical and they pretty challenging too. Number three. With this exercise, we're gonna point our toe and we're gonna bend our leg forward. It's skip C. Yes, there's gonna be a little bit more into it than just legs. You'll be also pushing your palms forward. They just a little bit below the surface and if you push them fast enough, you will notice a little bit of the splash. Now, once you bend your leg, your toes are moving off the bottom forward somewhere up to about knee level. You wanna stay in line. You are dealing with water resistance here, so it is pretty fast tempo, but it's not extreme, okay? With skip C, you can choose to turn around, you can move slightly forward and then backwards, but you don't wanna end it up bending your knee. You keep that leg straight. If you start bending your knee, you got another skip and we are not interested in this one, not today. This one is a great exercise for your core, especially lower part of abs. And I know that you are feeling it if you are doing this exercise with me. You can switch arm moves if you want to. The one that I showed you is just one of many examples. Here's number four, and this one I really like. We're actually gonna blend two moves. We're gonna kick all the way around, circle kick, and then double kick to the side. So I want you to flex your foot, draw a big circle below the surface, and then kick to the side twice, with your foot flexed as well. Now I will be repeating each side about eight times and then switch over to do exactly the same on the other leg. If you choose, you can do circle kick twice and side kick four times. It is really up to you how you blend those two great moves together. Intensivity of those moves will be a little lower just because we really want to focus on that great range of motion. Let's engage core. Let's pay attention to the fact that we need our back to stay straight. Our arms pretty much help us to maintain that position. You want to stabilize your upper body with that circle kick. Can you see how my upper body almost doesn't move when I go and draw that circle? That's exactly what I want you to try. Deal with that resistance. It's good for you. Next exercise, and this one is number five. We're gonna do aqua sprint with circular arm movements in for two and out for two. Obviously, you can choose to go for four or eight, however you want to. If you've done my high intensity workouts already, you know this one. You can tell that's one of my favorites and here's why. It is a very intensive one, so yes, we are working the most important muscle in our body, our heart. Plus, if you link your fingertips and you really draw big circles, you are working your arms, your chest, and even your back muscles. So make sure those are really big moves. You don't wanna end it up with just a tiny circles coming out from your wrist. It's your whole upper body working for the movement. Number six, we're gonna do four knee tucks and then four power jumps. So again, great mixture of two great moves. With the first one, you wanna curl your knees up and move your feet off the bottom of the pool. Then you are jumping up and down. Think about your belly button being moved above the surface with power jumps. And jump. Keep reaching higher and higher and remember to absorb that impact. Here, almost zero impact. Uh-huh, and here, yes. So you wanna make sure you go from toes to heels, 
that's gonna move your heart rate up again it is a very intensive move that's something that i love to blend with either cardio kickbacks or high intensity aqua and i know you are on board with me because those are my most popular aqua workouts on your exhale move both feet up at the same time curl those knees to the surface all right number seven back kick knee curl repeaters okay now we're gonna focus on one leg you're gonna push your heel back flex your foot with toes pointed down and after each kick i want you to curl your knee in towards your belly the other foot is grounded on the bottom of the pool you are pushing your palms away imagine there is a wall ahead of you and i don't know you're just giving a high fives to the wall or maybe you have a partner who works out with you and you actually are giving high fives. I will be also presenting about eight reps per leg and then I'm gonna switch direction. On the exhale, push your foot back. Really use your core and also really use those glutes. Don't end it up going halfway in. I really want you to work on pulling that knee up and forward. And moving on, we got number eight, floating kicks. Now we're gonna kick right and left and right and left, all of this without touching the bottom of the pool. So if you have an option to go slightly deeper, that would be a great idea. If not, just do your best and kick out to the side. You will actually feel that your legs and your muscles shake a little bit with those kicks. Don't kick both sides out at the time. I want you alternate. What about your arms? What are you gonna do with your hands? Well, anything that helps you float. And yes, they're gonna be very busy because it's not that easy to float in this position. I'll give you an idea. Try to kick and float like this for over two minutes. Number nine, and this one is a little tricky. You will also use your hands and do anything you possibly can to draw a circle with your legs underwater. So you're gonna go all the way from the bottom of the pool up to the surface and with a control tempo, you draw a big, big circle. Firstly, I want you to try going to the right and then to the left. It may seem very simple, but trust me, your abs will have to work really, really hard for you to do it. And that's exactly what we need, yes or yes. Quick tip make sure you breathe through it keep your lips open and exhale with the most challenging segment of this movement no rush i want you to take it slow do one at a time we are looking for perfection here don't bend your knees or maybe just a tiny bit but not too much moving on to number 10 v kicks and yes i love v kicks because that's another great exercise for abdominals especially lower part of abs you will be exhaling and pushing your feet up and forward you're gonna keep your feet open way wider than shoulders you can do this one and push your feet against the wall you can kick your feet anywhere forward your hands will be pushed back at the same time please notice our shoulders are supposed to stay above hips so you pretty much stay and keep your upper body in the same position that you do before you move your feet up uh-huh you don't want to end it up laying on your back and floating tempo of this exercise is your choice but it should be coordinating with your breath so you move your feet up and you are exhaling i 
I love incorporating V kicks to those high intensity workouts as well. So if you find this exercise useful, make sure you check high intensity aerobic intervals. There's already four different parts and I know you're gonna enjoy it. Moving on, here's number 11. We're gonna run sideways and we're gonna run extremely fast. As you take step to the side, you are crossing the other foot ahead of you and you wanna do anywhere from four to eight steps and then you're gonna come back. You can go from one point to another one or if you have more space, you can move forward with that zigzag motion and then head backwards with zigzag motion. But here's the thing, it has to be fast. Now look at the hands. They pretty much copy legs and they actually create that water flow, which makes it even harder to quickly turn around. I don't want you to do more than eight because you need that flow in the opposite direction to add more to the challenge. Keep your fingertips linked and your palms right below the surface. Go fast, 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 and then do exactly the same tempo on your return. Don't forget to smile when you do it. Number 12, split jumps. This exercise may remind you of V-kicks, but now you are kicking all the way out to the side. You will not be able to kick as close to the surface, but you really want to open up those feet, flex your feet. Your hands will go in toward each other at the same time when you kick. And you also want to exhale with each move. This exercise feels amazing, usually closer to an end of the class, when your muscles are warm up and you can benefit from those stretching exercise. Yes, this is dynamic stretch. Notice it's also the same position, shoulders above hips, and as before, we are not moving our upper body sideways or backwards. Yes, you will move your shoulders just a tiny bit forward, but it's almost not noticeable. Great exercise that's gonna open up those hips and also give you that great stretch. Did you know that flexibility is something we can improve at any age? That's pretty cool. I guess we're gonna move on to floating bike and this is number 13. This time I want you actually recline and float and your bike is right there in front of you. So just pretend you are sitting on a bike with your feet kicked forward. Move your arms in any way to maintain the position. Don't end up kicking your feet up and down. You want to maintain that circle of motion. So take your time. It's okay if you notice your legs move slowly. Your arms will burn calories for you. If you want, you can travel forward and backwards or even turn around. But don't compromise your great form. This is also very chatting friendly exercise. So if you work out with somebody else, that's gonna be on your list. Number 14, swing kicks. Oh yes, this one I recently discovered and I love it. You're gonna jump over, then lift up your knee, point your toe and kick. But those kicks are a little bit lower because you will not move knee any higher than your hips. By pointing your toe, you create additional resistance. Oh, you will feel the bigger muscle in your body to be really challenged. I want you to move your arms out and in. Without equipment, you're gonna probably mostly benefit from lower body challenge, so quads and core. But 
Once you check my other workouts, you'll see how we can take swing kicks to the next level and with dumbbells or noodles, or really feel burn in our arms. Each kick, exhale, let it go. This one is a real calorie burner because we are strengthening bigger muscle in our body. Moving on, it's number 15. And here's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be knee up, touch down. When you push your knee forward, you wanna lift up that knee as close to the surface as possible. Then I want you to push your toe back and touch the bottom of the pool. We're gonna repeat the same knee for anywhere from eight to 12 times, and only after it, we will switch side. You maintain shoulders above hips this entire time and medium tempo. With your left knee, I want you to push your right hand forward. Obviously, you're gonna switch side after that number of reps and everything will be opposite on the other side. One leg is pretty much grounded on the bottom of the pool. You put your whole attention to the leg that's doing curls. Knee up, touch down. I love it. Keep going. Most common mistake with this exercise is rounding up our spine. So make sure you keep those shoulders back, chest lifted. Number 16, very similar. We're gonna now move forward with pretty much the same power knee. So, the difference is we now alternate and also the other leg is moving up, right? There's a little bit of jump that takes you forward or backwards. Yes, we will come back backwards. Other than this, you also continue alternating legs. You are pushing the opposite arm forward and you are really pushing your body through the resistance. It is very hard to stay in the same line on the way back, but I want you to do your best and do it right. Now, if you don't have much space and you won't be able to move forward and backwards, try going around. There's always a way. And then you can reverse the motion and go backwards. Keep going. Next exercise is also one of my favorites and recently discovered number 17, heel touches, front and back. So we're also gonna focus on one side, heel to the opposite palm forward and then heel back right there. Try that again on the other side and then we're gonna repeat the same time anywhere from eight to 12 times. When you are watching me doing this exercise, you have no idea how challenging this one is for inner thighs and out thighs and guess what? Hamstrings, but it is. So make sure you take it to the pool, give it a try, do enough reps more than just eight this is just an example just a test you definitely want to do more of the repetitions keep your fingertips linked don't lean forward don't move sideways no bouncing up and down you see the top of my head very little motion there mm-hmm what a resistance let's use it With this exercise, I recommend not using any other equipment. Well, maybe aqua gloves would be good fit or pads, but that's it. With dumbbell or noodle, it's just not the same because it draws our attention somewhere else. And here's another fun exercise, number 18. Break down the door kick. Ooh la la! Let's use our imagination. We're gonna begin with 
front kicks. Let's alternate right and left. Jump over, lift up your knee and kick. Then when you're ready, you're gonna imagine the door that you wanna break down. Push, both feet forward at the same time. Keep going. Alternate those kicks a couple times. Catch that breath. And then when you're ready, boom, kick forward, break down the door. Do it again. This one is fun. And guess what? You can imagine the door is right in front of you or on your side. That's up to you. This is another exercise where your hands has a lot to do. They just help you to perform that move better. Yes, the door is on the side, whoop, and the kick is even better. Continue with a couple more kicks. You decide whether you want to alternate kicks for eight, for 12, and then kick it to the side. But remember, it's not the floaty, relaxing kick. It has to be a tough one in order to be number 18. And number 19, and this is a mix of kicks. We're gonna do front kick, touch down, and then roundhouse kick and touch down. Which means after each kick, you will be pushing your toes back and down to the bottom of the pole. Now, with front kick, I want you to flex your foot with roundhouse kicks pointed. Use your arms in any way that you want to to perform those kicks better. By that, I mean good tempo, and good range of motion. The closer you can kick toward the surface of the water, the better. As before, I want you to try to do eight to 12 kicks on each side and then switch leg. But it doesn't mean eight or 12 is the end. You're gonna do right side and then you're gonna do left and then you're gonna do right and left again until you feel you've had enough. Tempo of this exercise would be medium because we really have to put a lot of strength to push our leg through the resistance. You should find this challenging and you actually should find that you are forced to exhale out with every single kick. If you're not, you probably are not kicking hard enough. Put a little bit more strength into it. And number 20 is L-step. This one is a little slower. We're gonna move from side to side with L-step. So basically we draw L on the bottom of the pool with our feet. You wanna take a pretty big step to the side, keeping your toes pointed forward or sideways after you turn sideways. And you wanna make sure you keep your feet very close to the bottom of the pool. So no moving is up and down. Again, dealing with the resistance is the idea here. This is a great one for cool down as it's less intensive or you can use it in between any cardio exercise as your active recovery. Remember that you wanna open up your feet wider than your shoulder width apart and definitely widen and hip width apart. It's a long step. If we want to engage those out thighs and inner thighs, that's the plan. Anything you do with your hands is fine. They can copy leg moves. All right, let's move on. It's gonna be number 21, and this is a real jackpot. <laughs> We're gonna do floating sprints. And we're gonna mix that up with regular sprints. So here I'm not touching the bottom of the pool. I pretend I sprint, I actually sprint, and this is the regular aqua sprint. So every eight or every 10, you're gonna switch up from regular sprint 
to floating sprint. And yes, taking this exercise to deeper end of the pool will also be a great idea. Keep going, move fast. Use your arms in any way to help you perform those sprints better and faster. Keep that heart rate up. This one is challenging, fast, intensive. This one burns lots of calories. We can definitely incorporate weights along with this one. Number 22, scissors. And we're gonna have the prom position, so almost prom position, which means almost laying down on our belly. Arms will move out and in and legs up and down. Notice there's no movement coming from our hips. They are below the surface and they are stabilized. For that, you have to engage your core. You don't wanna bend your knees. You don't wanna kick your legs out or to the side or anywhere else. Instead, with your legs straight, you are pushing your toes down to the bottom of the pool and another toe as close to the water surface as you can with arms moving out and in, very close to the surface. This is a great exercise and you can absolutely try doing it with noodles or dumbbells or gloves. And yes, using aqua belt can also be a great idea here. Number three, it's keep a B. We're gonna do heel back jump along with it. Skip B, it's easy to remember, you're gonna kick your boom boom with it. So you are alternating your heels and then boom, both heels back at the same time. Here's your heel back jump. Boom, uh-huh. Try to lean forward and super important, don't over arch your lumbar spine. You can do it by making sure your abs stay pulled in and Core engaged. That's also something we can do along with water dumbbells, aqua gloves, on noodles. You can also hold the wall of the pool if you want to. Keep your feet shoulder width apart and remember the goal is to challenge hamstrings here. That's the muscle that's below your glutes and above glutes and above your knee back part of your leg and this one is quite forgotten muscle so with this exercise we got it covered okay number 24 Ladies especially will enjoy it because ladies love diamonds. And this one is great and challenging at the same time. You keep your heels together, toes slightly open out to the side, and once you pull your feet in towards yourself, you're gonna open up your knees. Your hands again have a tough task to do. Help your body to float on the surface of the water. Why we do this exercise? Well, because we love diamonds and for two, it's great for our abs. So let's do a lot of those. Obviously, we can make it so much easier by using noodle or dumbbells, but without them, it's really taking this exercise to the next level. Power wave side to side, it's number 25, and I love this one. I love it even more with gloves, but today is what can we do without equipment? And yes, we can take so much out of this exercise if only we link our fingertips together, if only we put a lot of strength into each of those moves. Keep your palms sideways, right below the surface, and notice those waves moving around you. Don't splash water, you're gonna see waves. It's not power splash, it's power wave, side to side. 
it not it doesn't only works your arms I hope once you take it to the water you feel what a great exercise this one is for your core especially for those obliques and you can choose to jump up and down along and switch direction like I just showed you not only you want to see the flow I want you to hear this movement it's like a tsunami wave uh-huh number 26 is very similar it's power wave but now we're gonna move front and back so we got a lunge position you will begin with your right leg forward left leg back feet are grounded on the bottom of the pool right foot down and flat left toe sticking to the bottom and arms create waves they first go forward then backwards no splash just waves oh this one is tough and you should notice that you have to exhale with each move switch leg after about 8 to 12 and keep going oh here you really don't need any equipment actually i would say it's way better without any equipment we can use so much strength and really strengthen our body just by using the resistance and surface of our palms in this case obviously we have to keep going number 27 speed back air and water along with skip b which you already know you're gonna do speed back below the surface uh-huh and then you're gonna go up 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 now this one is great for warm-up cool down also for active recovery it's not very intensive but it's a fun move and it keeps us going and it also strengthens our arms I like to add speed back to kickboxing combinations and again mostly in an interval training for those easier segments you can move around with speed back you can turn around it's a fun move 28 hip twist jumps so this one is also very relaxing and you want to do it closer to an end of the class because you need to be absolutely warm up you have your knee slightly bent and you basically twist from side to side keeping those abdominals engaged remember that our spine does not appreciate if we twist and move it too much side to side so it's a small move and you have to keep your core engaged because that's going to protect you from twisting too much it's best if you do it with the song twist and shout number 29 aqua jacks and mixed with floating jacks look at this uh-huh four on the ground four floating okay let's do it again in and out hands do exactly the same what legs do and then when you kick your legs forward and out your hands will help you to float because you have four more to do with your feet very close to the surface and then you just blend those together and you are having fun aren't you guys all of those moves we're gonna incorporate to our future workouts in 2020 and then 2021 so make sure you review this video you can pick your favorites practice them on your own and then you're gonna be so ready when i'm gonna add another full workout but i want you to do your homework okay when you do it check in let me know in the comments i need to hear from you I cannot see you, so I have to hear you, hear from you. 
This one is also great for core, but also for out thighs and inner thighs. And we are moving on number 30. We got their floating crisscross, cross country skiing, excuse me, and then cross country skiing floating. So this is the regular one and then boom, aha, uh -huh, we are floating again. So imagine there's a wall in front of you and you want to mix up regular cross country skiing, with the tricky version of it. Yeah, this one is like from another planet. You're gonna love it. So as before, you can choose to alternate every four, every eight or 12, however you want to. Try push one toe over the surface. And then once your feet are on the ground, do a good range of motion here. Woo! Guys, I did about a minute of each uh, exercise and it took us about 40 minutes. So if you spend two, three minutes per exercise, you are getting an awesome workout. So blend them all together. Because you've been watching this whole video, I'm gonna have a surprise for you at the end, okay? Stick with me, practice cross-country skiing, work your core, have fun with it. And I get a bonus for you. This one is number 21, 31. We're gonna run forward and then we're gonna run backwards. And guys, I love adding motion to any workouts. It is sometimes challenging for me to add lots of those to the videos that I make for you because the camera sometimes won't find me. But I'm telling you, they are even better. So I promise I will try incorporate at least some of it to the future workouts. Well, for now, just practice this one and have fun with it. What a powerful move that is when you are heading backwards and you're gonna feel it. I want you to run like this for about three minutes. The fastest version of this exercise will burn so many calories. It can be your warm up, it can also be your cool down. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which one is your favorite one of 2020. And I promise I'm gonna include those in the next workouts. Share those videos with your friends and family. Help me to grow this channel. Guys, as I make this video, we are 7,000 subscribers strong. The biggest aqua class ever. And you are a part of it. So thank you so much. Have fun with those and stay active. Sending my love. Bye-bye. I'm not broken